Gang, just ran into my local Ace Hardware. This little sack of stuff, $100. And I bought snake oil. And I bought a lot of snake oil. I bought Flex Seal, as seen on TV. Three products. These were 14 American dollars a piece. I'm hoping, I'm sure that they'll work. I just hope it holds up. That's what we're after here. So I have no idea what I did here originally, um, but I did it in a hurry with what I had in Los Angeles, California. So I'm gonna try to do a little work from the top with this Flex Seal tape. I know it could do better. I was looking for rubber washer tech screws, self-tapping screws. I call them tech screws. I don't know why, probably a brand from a long time ago. I wanna show you the sunroof. Now its biggest source of interior leakitude is this piece right here is no longer sealed this way and this piece is loose. So the water that's meant to collect in this tray runs out of it and spills everywhere. That's, we can deal with that. Fixing this and running this hose down will be the start of that. But I mean, that's pretty crusty. Falling over gang, falling over. This is all pretty crusty. So I guess if we're gonna get into it, I should just pop this thing out and then we should reseal the entire thing because it's sunny and it's nice out. And that's where our snake oil comes in. Don't fully remember how to do this, gang. Like I said, I think this is like a, pretty sure it's a Land Rover D1 sunroof. I think I ordered it off eBay. They're extremely common. They were the same, I think, for the front and rear sunroof. We'll figure out the wiring, maybe, and maybe not. It does have a little crank, so you can just turn it with an Allen key, which is what I've been doing. Did some research on this thing, gang. The sunroof has its own ECU in the Land Rover, so uh, we don't have that. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Use your head, gang. Gotta use your head. Yeah, the neighbor's super good tree guys are back, so dog's about to lose her dog mine, right dog? You're gonna tell him what's up? Now, in case you're wondering how to put a sunroof in your van or whatever, it's the same as a roof vent. You basically get the shape of the thing. This is the original roof piece that I saved. You trace your sunroof, you cut it out with a sawzall or a grinder or a jigsaw. Jigsaw is usually the best in my opinion. Then the flange overhangs your hole and you glue that in. And you can see the sunroof has this whole ridge around it, right? That's where the leaks usually come from, at least most of them. And that gets caught by the pan that comes in from the bottom. Now on our pan, this whole contraption over here is leaking. So we're gonna clean this all out and then reseal it so that when the water runs down, it collects in here, runs out the little tube, much like on this side, runs out the little tube, and we can feed it out through a fender well or something like that. Let's get technical, gang. Check this out. So here's the beginning of our track for our sunroof, right? And there's our front mounting hole for our pan thing that goes in here. Why don't you see something? In relationship, that's our front mounting hole that we were just looking at. So our track actually goes to the edge of this little cutout square thing. The issue is this cutout square thing is a piece of plastic glued to our steel pan. Why the steel pan's not the right shape, I just don't know. But this one is very loose. So it has to fill up before the water will actually run out of this little hole and before it does that it just runs all over the place so we got to get this thing out and reseal the whole deal thought about making a new steel one it just feels excessive right now all right gang i got these little plastic cups out i cleaned everything all the old adhesive off with a wire wheel i will say i don't know if other sunroofs are better but this one doesn't open super super far and this is a huge design flaw. Um, just why, why would you have the sump, which is your, you know, your, your, the place that collects water, all sunroofs have this, to run out. Why would it be plastic and bonded to steel on something that's gonna expand and contract and expand and contract? It's my understanding too that where these would leak in the actual Land Rovers, it would fry the ECU that was in the ceiling for the sunroof. I don't know that for sure because I've never had one. I mean, gang. I'm not a Land Rover kind of guy. It's not that they're not nice, just <laughs> I'm just gonna give this the full business. Uh, I'm using this stuff just because these RTV products, 
I mean, they seal really well. They stay flexible. If they can handle the heat of a transmission, I'm assuming they can handle the heat of a sunroof. And if they can handle oil, I'm assuming that water will be no big deal. How many assumptions was that in a row? A lot, gang. All right, there we are, all re-glued in. I guess that's about as good as it gets, which I don't love it. Uh, you know, if you're out there designing sunroof pans to catch water, make the part where the water comes out an integral part. Gang, my little McNubbin right there fell off. Uh, those break pretty easily too, because the hose has to get attached and unattached. And anyway, uh, I've already complained about the design, so we can skip that part. What I did was I grabbed a piece of, I think that's quarter inch brake tubing and had the flare end on that side and put a ton of goo on there. Hopefully it'll work for a while. If it doesn't, I don't know. I think that I could remake this piece out of steel, weld it all in, drill in and tap a piece that would go. We'll see if I like the sunroof that much anyway. I mean, I kind of do like it, I won't lie, but it's a bit of a hassle. So if you're thinking about doing this, I don't really know. I also have mentioned in other videos, I bought a Honda Pilot sunroof, but it seems like quite quite a deal to install. I was gonna put it in the back because they can flip all the way open. The idea is that you can stand up. Anyway, it's a neat idea, but not happening at the moment. Oh, hi there. Use my super cool fancy ladder that we installed. So this thing, it doesn't leak much but it leaks a little. And so I can see a couple places where it might. The thought is use this snake oil. Here we go. Pretty gross. Good news is she's cleaning up just fine. Bad news is all this is still moving. So whatever we get anything to stick to, we better go ahead and get the roof where it's supposed to go first. So that's a whole different ball of marbles. All right, gang, since this thing got clobbered by a tree, which is a crying shame, but we can fix it these pieces are no longer attached to the roof piece. So it got hit this way, mostly. Caddy corner from the door over to this side where the edge of the branch came down and mangled this. So this is the worst of it, but it broke these loose from here and bent this whole framing. I gotta jack this whole thing up and jam a bunch of construction adhesive in there and just let it set up probably overnight because Construction adhesive usually takes quite a while to dry, and I think once it's one unit again, it'll be okay. But it's sort of, it's a ripple effect. Like, that one's bent a little, this one's bent a ton. From here back, it's like, bad, not so bad, only a little bad, but they're all, they all need some love, you know? So we got ourselves a little situation. I think I need, I think I've got a measurement from the floor to where these things need to be sort of in the center. Thing is, thing is to get them to stay there, construction adhesive takes many hours to dry. So it would be like, uh, oh, I don't know. Set up a set, glue it, hope it holds. When it's done, take the jacks down, move the jacks, do it again. The reason I was thinking construction adhesive is you can see that's kind of, that must be what this was originally that held it all together. That'll take forever, or I need to go to the store and buy a bunch of two by fours that I can cut to length and really jam everything together. Or, you know, I can drag the welder out here, jack everything up and just tack weld it. I'm thinking thinking plan whatever that was with the welder it's not like we're gonna damage the paint two by four transmission jack maybe this will work so 
the camera has weird lensing and all that, but there's a big dip right in the center. It's not an optical delusion, it's real. What I don't wanna do, I mean, it kind of makes sense to work from the outside back into this thing, but I'm also afraid that I'll lock this into place if I don't start here and work my way back out. I mean, it's kind of working. I jammed a level up there and there's a huge difference now. So, so I gotta get the welder out here, grind off some clean spots and just work my way across and then work my way back and forward and this is gonna be a thing, gang, but I don't, I don't see a better way to do it. I mean, look how much that's lifted. Whew. But, A, it would be better if water ran off the roof rather than pooling up, but B, no matter what I seal toward the back of the van, it's not gonna matter if the whole roof is flopping around, you know what I mean? I drag the welder out here. It's not an off-road cart, but this is why it's great to have a 110 MIG in your repertoire because we got to do some repairs in the field. All right, gang, thing of beauty, I don't know, but way, way, way better, gang. Let's clean this up and see what we can do with this snake oil. Flex seal, razzmatazz. I'm gonna try to treat it like flashing. I'm gonna try to go up around this edge right here, which will be covered by that, and then run it past this edge down here. See how it goes. This stuff's really expensive. Plan now is I'm gonna go around the bottom edge with the black stuff and then come in over the top of it with the white stuff. And with two layers, hopefully, we are flex sealed. See you in a minute. Well, gang, I mean, it sure is not pretty. Uh, but I think it'll work. I just, like everything else, it's not about whether it'll work. It's not a yes or no, it's for, for how long. Sure, the guy built a boat out of it on TV, but like, and it worked right then, but how did it do like a couple weeks later, you know? So we'll see how it does with stretching and shrinking and heating cycles and cooling cycles. And it's just tape. If it was a nice van with nice paint and stuff, there was no way I would do this. Um, there's got to be a better system to putting one of these in though with the ribs. That's kind of the biggest issue I think I think where the sunroof is in the front the ribs stop and it gets flat So that wasn't as big a deal Gang leak proofing day is just not over yet. I Knew this was bad and I think this is where my windshield leak is actually coming from you ready for this you ready for this How weird is that like what is going on here? I mean, I know what's going on here. I got a rust hole, but that is the strangest place that I can think of for a real California vehicle. Like why, why is it there? I don't know, but we have to actually repair it. Now, I don't really care how good it looks afterwards. We're not gonna like body work it and all that stuff, but it needs to be solid. And if I'm being honest, I am worried about welding around all this glass and I don't know if I need to take it in. And if I do, that means I need to get like really clean metal because you cannot TIG rusty stuff. You can MIG rusty stuff, but you cannot TIG it. Dang it. Dudes, that is so weird. Got a little hole right there. But like, what is, what happened here? Also, I can't tell if this stuff that's chipping out of the drip rail is factory or if somebody caulked it in a million years ago. Don't really know, but this stinks. I gotta go, I, mean, I guess bigger is better in this case. So I gotta cut along that edge, go up and see what we got for steel. Uh, yeah. It was ridiculous, but this is not a step you should skip if you're gonna be welding near glass you wanna keep. Man, I've made that mistake. Welding and grinding, if I'm being honest. Uh, the sparky little bits of metal will embed themselves in the glass, the spatter or the grinder sparks. You may be like, ah, oh, that kinda stinks. And then you drive at night and you're like, oh boy, cause all the light just starts to sparkle. 
And then you drive at night in the rain and you're like, oh my God, I'm, I, I gotta buy a new windshield. So, you know, this is bare minimum, not even overkill. You gotta like jam your knee onto the hood here. Then we're gonna have to cut all this out. Center, same kind of thing here. And then jam the new piece in. I think because this is like such an awkward place to work, like, like sharing an office with your ex or something like that, like it's awkward, gang. And so I think I might bad chad this in, cut the bottom, lean it in there, and then cut it with a with a grinder all together, and then butt weld that back in. Uh, not super concerned with the fit and finish at the end of it, but I do need it to be waterproof. I mean, it all will just sort of join the murder van aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, this it just it just stinks. It's a weird place to be. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, that was no fun. I think that probably took about an hour. It's probably screaming hot right now. I can't say it's my best work, but it's pretty darn good for what it is. Um, less holes though, so I guess we'll nail it with some primer, cover it with some textured kills outdoor, you know, van color, and uh, move right along. All right, my can's a little weathered, but it's not a lot of work. This is a bare metal slash rusty metal primer, so. Oh no. It's new. Son of a. Not terrible. <laughs> not high dollar work either. But uh, if we didn't stop our leak, we certainly slowed her down. I mean, I can get under it enough. Hopefully I can get it out without breaking it so we can reseal it. But I'll tell you what, after welding this little section, I sure do not want to weld in the sunroof thing right now. All right. Well, that's how you do a sunroof, kind of, you know? You cut a hole, you shove a thing in there, and you glue it in. So, got to clean up this edge. We're gonna reseal it with Flex Seal. So that seemed to be the right kind of rubbery mixture. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I know a lot of people use like uh, butyl tapes and stuff like that. Um, I prefer something I can put on in excess because none of this was made to go together. So, got a lot of cleaning up to do on the edge. I'll take this down, clean that up. Stick it back in. What? All right, gang, we're all cleaned up here. Uh, I cleaned up in here as well. I gotta get all the rest of this stuff out, but it looks like there's a factory seam right there. So where the seam sealer was chipping out, I'm gonna go ahead and refill all that with Flex Seal. See how that does now that we've got fewer holes in the roof while we got this thing out i thought we should do a quick like if you're gonna do a sunroof kind of like video section segment segment they call it this segment's brought to you by little brown dog coffee and how to shove a sunroof in your murder van sort of uh the sunroof that you purchase obviously you're gonna want to get it first it has a lip this goes on the inside of the car this rests on the top make a cardboard template that fits pretty tight to this edge then you line up that template you know, because you got a full cutout template, goes onto your roof. You cut around that, and basically, you need to make sure that your hole is big enough to get this part in with plenty of overhang here to seal the thing up. That's pretty much it. We're gonna goop on both sides. I'm gonna goop on this side, and I'm gonna goop all the way around this edge. And then we gotta put the sunroof in, and then you gotta put the tray in on the bottom, because that kind of holds it all together, and that's what creates the seal and how it's gonna live. I was gonna say let's do it, but my flex seal is over there on the truck. My cock gun is somewhere else. I've got like a hundred and they're all crappy. All right, here we go. 
feel like we're probably pretty good. Sure. Hmm. Where do I want to be to do this? Does anyone remember? Nope. I don't know what I'm doing. More smarter. More smarter, maybe. Well, it looks a little bit like somebody tried to caulk in their first bathtub, but hopefully it'll dry and it'll seal and we will be significantly more waterproof. I gotta run some kind of tube down here. I can't seem to get into the pillar, but once we run some drain tubes out and down, hopefully all the water that collects in this pan will no longer leak from this edge. It will actually run down the tube and out. How do we do? Some of that top layer is peeling off, which is a little discouraging there, but come on, it's as seen on TV, snake oil. So hopefully it's a little better. Anyway. All right, gang. We're gonna have to test it with a hose at some later point when everything dries. So that's gonna do it for the waterproofing, whatever episode this is of the murder van, revival, makeover, whatever. Good luck on your projects out there. We'll see you next time. We've got a lot of wiring to do.